Hello students, welcome to EPG Patshala. In this module, we shall be discussing endemic species of India. The learning objectives of this module are, what, what is endemism, what are different types of endemism, habitat for endemics, theories of endemism, endemism in India and endemic species of India. The concept of endemism is central to the study of biogeography. The term endemism was coined by A. P. D. Candole in 1855 for the distribution of an organism, uh, exam for example, plant, animal or microorganism in a limited geographical area. In ecological terms, it states that a plant or an animal lives only in a particular location such as a specific island, habitat type, nation or other defined zone. It is the associate, it is the association of a biological taxon with the unique and well defined geographic area. The cosmopolitan distribution or cosmopolitan is the antithesis of endemism and refers to a taxon which is extremely widespread in many world regions. For example, highest number of endemic taxa are found in Australia region. All important islands and mountain chains except isolated piece of country like Italy from 48 degree north to southwards possesses endemics. Maximum proportion of endemism is found in West Australia and South African region. All the southern land masses have great number of species confined to themselves. That is, endemism is higher in old land masses than in young land masses. For example, land of northern hemisphere which are covered by the Pleistocene ice sheets have lower number of endemics. Now, what is endemic? The term endemic is used to denote, to denote a species, genus or other group confined to a small area like single island or group of islands or a mountain chain or a comparatively small country like South Africa or West Australia largely bounded by sea or by a marked alteration of climate. What are endemic species? An endemic species is one that is only found in a particular region and nowhere else in the world. Since these species are not widespread and may be confined to only one or two protected areas, they are of great conservation concern. A plant may be said to be endemic to a certain state, to a certain country or to a continent, although there is no country or island that have all its species endemic, yet it is very common to find genera with all their species endemic. Now, how many types of endemism are there? Two general classes of endemisms are widely recognized. One of them is paleoendemism and second one is neoendemism. Now, what is paleoendemism or what are paleoendemic species? Paleoendemics means ancient endemics. These are the organisms, animals as well as plants that are restricted to an area because they have died out elsewhere. A fossil record elsewhere is the best evidence for paleoendemism. For example, in uh, Sequoia, Sequoia dendron, Linothemus, these are also described as those species which used to live in a large area in the past, but now they live only in a smaller area. Neoendemism species or neoendemism means that a species has recently appeared which is closely related to the main species or one that has formed following hybridization and is now classified as a separate species. 
This is a common process in plants, especially those which exhibit polyploidy. These species result from the divergent adaptation to different environmental conditions, thereby leading to the formation of new species that are locally disturbed. Now, habitat for endemic, endemics. The biological organisms have different patterns of distribution where they live on the globe. The territory where a species lives is called as its distribution. It describes that where in the world that species naturally occurs. Therefore, based on their habitat of distribution on entire globe, species can be cosmopolitan, endemic or disjunct. For example, the distribution of polar bear restricted to Arctic region and lemurs occur naturally only in the island of Madagascar region is considered as the endemic species of that particular region. Another example of endemic species is bay checker sport butterfly that is uh, Euphy dryas editha biensis occurring in only one region in the San Francisco Bay area. In contrast to this brown rats occurring everywhere are considered as cosmopolitan species. Now, what are the characters of endemism? Endemic species are localized in distribution because of their narrow ecological amplitude and are unable to invade in fresh areas. They lack potentially to migrate because of saturated genomes. Real endemics never migrate while neo endemics have the potential to migrate. The dispersal propagules are not able to sustain during migration to other areas, it may be due to physical barriers. What are the theories of endemisms? There are two main theories of endemism. The first theory believes that the last survivors of the once flourishing flora which is now declining are the relics or epibiotics which are endemic. However, second theory believes that these are recent and youthful forms in course of gradual extinction. According to Willis age and area hypothesis, most endemic species are considered to be youthful that is youngsters rather old relic. Based on species distributional range of species, they can be categorized into various types and these types of the species are shown here in this slide. Species can be classified as cosmopolitan, endemic and disjunct. disjunct. Cosmopolitan species are those species which are widely distributed. The example is brown rat. Endemic species are occurring in one geographic location, example is polar bear. Then dis, disjunct species are the species which are occurring in two or more regions and that are, that are separated from each other. They come under the category of disjunct, disjunct species. Now, question arise, what or which factors are responsible for endemisms? Factors responsible for the production of endemics are natural crossing among the closely related plants growing under favorable conditions and mutations. If the condition of isolation is developed, the effect become more pronounced. Endemism is found in isolated, example is islands, isolated areas, etcetera. Mountains also have more endemic species as they are isolated. For example, 70 percent species of Himalayas are endemic. Climate also is one of the factor. For example, north of Himalaya is dry plateau of Tibet and southern Himalayan range has alluvial fertile soil. According to Chatterjee, the percentage of endemic species of dicot plants in India is more than 50. 
maximum endemic plants are found in the Himalayas and South India. Indo-Gangetic plains have a very small, very small number of endemic species. There are multiple causes of rarity and endemism. Three primary factors that describe the distribution of endemics are geographical area, ecological role of the species and isolation. These three factors are very, very important. Stebbins in 1980 has given the gene pool or niche interaction theory to explain origin of rarity and endemism. According to theory, the primary cause of localized or endemic distribution pattern is adaptation to a combination of ecological factors that are themselves localized. Factors of small texture and chemical composition are the most important, but by no means the only ones. Next to the climate and edific factors, those inherent into gene pool of the population are of critical importance. They include the total amount of variability, the amount of variability that can be released at any one time and the amount of variation that can be generated with respect to those particular characteristics that affect most strongly the establishment of a new population. Let me discuss endemism in India. We all know that India is a tropical country that is one of the mega diversity center. With only 2.4 percent of the world's land area, India accounts for 7 to 8 percent of all recorded species, including over 45,000 45, species of plants and 91,000 species of animals. It is situated at the trijunction of the Afrotropical, Indo-Malayan and Palearctic realms, all of which sport rich biodiversity. Being one of the 17 identified mega diversity countries, India has 10 biogeographic zones and is home to 8.5 percent of the mammalian species documented so far, with the corresponding figures for avian species being 13.66 uh, percent for reptiles 7.91 percent, for amphibians 4.66 percent, for fishes 11.72 percent and for plants 11.80 percent. Four of the 34 globally identified biodiversity hotspots, namely the Himalayas, Indo-Burma, the Western Ghats, Sri Lanka and Sundalands are represented in India. The diverse physical features and climatic conditions have resulted in a variety of ecosystems such as forest ecosystem, grassland ecosystem, wetlands ecosystem and desert ecosystem, coastal ecosystems, marine ecosystem, which harbor and sustain high biodiversity and contribute to human well-being. In India, there are four mega endemic centers and these endemic centers are Indo Burma covering Mizoram, Manipur, Nagaland, Meghalaya, Tirpura and Andaman Islands. Second is Himalayas covering Jammu and Kashmir, Himachal Pradesh, Uttarakhand, northern part of West Bengal that is Darjeeling region, Sikkim and northern part of Assam and Arunachal Pradesh. The third one is Western Ghats that falls within the state of Tamil Nadu, Kerala, Karnataka, Goa. Maharashtra and Gujarat, the Sunda lands covering the Nicobar Islands. This table gives the number of endemic plant under different plant groups mentioned in the fifth report of Convention of Biological Diversity 2014 reported by Botanical Survey of India. In India, there are total angiospermic species are 17,926 and out of them 22.57 percent are endemic in nature. Similarly, in gymnosperms, 10.81 percent are endemic. In uh, pteridophytes, 15.47 percent are endemic. In bryophytes, 
25.64 percent are endemic and in algae 26.9 percent are endemic. Now, to summarize this module, in this module we have learnt what is endemism, what factors leads to endemism, what are different theories of endemism and we have also learned about endemism and endemic species of India. Thank you.